Now, cold sores can be enough of an embarrassment or even just a general hassle to get you to learn a whole new assortment of cuss words. So if you're dealing with recurrent cold sores, you literally have no choice in your life but to watch this video. Your cold sores and why they show up are actually going to make sense to you. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now, most people know that cold sores come from the herpes simplex virus. And you can get this virus just through skin-to-skin -skin contact. Now, it usually comes about by making out with some sleazy guy, but you can really get it from any skin-to-skin -skin contact with someone who has an active outbreak. Now, it's believed that once you have the virus, that it stays in the body indefinitely. What most people don't know is that it's the status of your immune system that can dictate whether or not you get a breakout or not. So before we dig into this too much, let's just go over the fact that stress can occupy the immune system. And that's why a lot of people will get a cold sore when they're really stressed out. So if, let's say your boss is just the biggest jerk that there is. He's hardly even a human. He's such a jerk. Then you need to find a way to simmer down now or get a new boss. The stress can also kind of be the, the straw that breaks the camel's back. So just know that you don't have to completely remove all the stress from your life. If you can optimize some of these other areas that we're going to talk about in this video, then you might be able to deal with a little bit more stress. Now, to truly understand cold sores, we need to understand the immune system. Now, there's a lot of aspects to the immune system, but what we really want to look at here is the signaling factor. So you have this virus that's in the body all the time, and what happens is anytime we have some type of invader, the body signals the immune system, hey, there's an invader here that you need to keep in check. So basically, it doesn't have to completely wipe out this invader. It just has to keep it from really flourishing and flowering and going out of control and creating a breakout when it comes to the herpes simplex virus. So when we're looking at cold sores, it's all about is the immune system having the ability to keep this virus in check? Now, what allows the body to signal the immune system to take care of an invader is calcium at the tissue level. Now, most people have plenty of calcium in the body. What happens is that it's usually in the wrong place, and there's a lot of factors that can pull calcium out of the right place and, and make it go to the wrong place. So when too much calcium leaves the tissue, that removes that ability for that signal to go to the immune system that, hey, there's a problem you need to keep, keep in line here. So when too much calcium leaves the tissue, that signal doesn't happen, and then that herpes simplex virus can flower and we get a cold sore. And yes, that always seems to happen at the worst possible time, but by the end of this video, you're going to understand factors that will really trigger that to happen. So that now you're pulling too much calcium out of the tissue, all of a sudden you got a cold sore, and the only way to hide it is by wearing a baby Yoda mask. So one thing that you can do is you can check your urine pH. Now you can get urine pH testing strips at most health food stores and you can get them on Amazon. We'll put a link in the description below to show you exactly what we're talking about and you can either get it on Amazon or, or somewhere locally. But if you see that your urine pH at least two hours after a meal, but, but not the first urine in the morning, don't check that one because that's going to show you different stuff. But at least two hours after a meal, if your urine pH is higher than, say, 6.1, that's a strong indication that too much calcium has been pulled out of the tissues. And when that happens, then this calcium kind of floats around like free-floating calcium, and the body will try to get rid of it. And one way it gets rid of that is to pee it out. And since calcium is more alkaline, it can raise the alkalinity or raise the pH of your urine. And that's a really strong sign that, hey, I need to take some steps right now or I'm going to get a cold sore. Now, let's look at some of the things that we can have happen that will pull calcium out of the tissue. We want the calcium in the tissue so that that signal can be gone. Hey, there's a problem. Take care of it. immune system, right? So now let's look at some of these factors that can pull too much calcium out of the tissues and, and create this problem of the immune system not being signaled to keep this little invader in check. Now, one of the biggest factors when we're looking at this formula, and one of the biggest mistakes that people are making, especially now with them wanting to improve their immune system, is too much vitamin D. Now, don't get me wrong, vitamin D is a champion, and we need that for our immune system to function, because what vitamin D does is it helps us pull calcium out of the intestinal tract 
into the bloodstream. So we can deliver calcium to where it needs to be and that calcium can be in the tissues so that the signal can be going, hey, there's a problem there, immune system, let's take care of this. So vitamin D is great. But what happens is when we have too much vitamin D, the vitamin D doesn't just pull the calcium out of the intestinal tract into the bloodstream. It pulls all the calcium out of the tissues and, and even out of your bones and holds it into the bloodstream. So it becomes like this huge, crazy shop vac that pulls all the calcium from everywhere into the bloodstream. So even though the immune system can't function with enough vitamin D, it also can't function correctly when there's too much vitamin D. So this takes us right back to wanting to look at our urine pH. And if urine pH is over 6.2, that's a strong indication that you may be taking too much vitamin D or one of these other factors that we're going to talk about could be at play as well. But that's one of the biggest mistakes I see is people taking too much vitamin D, pulling all the calcium out of the tissues, and then the signal can't be sent and the, the virus breaks out and we, we have a big cold sore going on. So another big factor is too many carbohydrates. Carbs and sugars, and especially liquid sugars, like you know alcohol or, or soda or fruit punch or something like that, all these factors can pull a lot of the calcium out of the tissue because calcium wants to follow sugar. It's just like the ice cream truck when we were a kid. We all wanted to follow the ice cream truck, so that's what calcium does too. And when someone's consuming too many carbohydrates and sugars, it'll pull too much of that calcium out of the tissues and then we have a problem. Another factor is too much sun exposure. Too much sun exposure gives us too much vitamin D and that gives us the same problem just like if we were supplementing with too much vitamin D. And a couple other supplements that can be problematic that are common is, is too much glutamine and too much arginine. Both of these have the ability to pull calcium out of the tissues and uh, cause that problem of a lack of a signal for the immune system. So those are some factors that you can kind of look at and see if they might be a problem in your life and especially when you get a breakout. You can start saying like, oh man, I got a breakout. Let me look back and think about what was going on. Oh yeah, this weekend I was at the beach and I had 15 beers and I ate 17 plates of nachos. Well, that makes sense. Why wouldn't I have a cold sore? So now let's look at some of the factors that we can use in our favor to help push that calcium back down to the tissue level where it's supposed to be. Now, keep in mind that you don't have to have a high urine pH for the body to be pulling too much calcium out of the tissue level. It's just a great marker to have in your corner to be able to check out and say, oh yeah, my urine pH is high, so that's probably a strong confirmation that I have pulled too much calcium out of the tissue level and I should take some of these steps to help push it back to the right place. So the first thing we want to look at is an amino acid called lysine. And lysine is really great at pushing calcium back down to the tissue level. It's, it's one of the most popular remedies for cold sores. And it's not that lysine is some magical remedy for a cold sore. It's just that when you understand the actual cause of a cold sore, now you understand why lysine can be beneficial. It helps push the calcium back where it's supposed to be and allow the immune system to function and, and keep that virus in, under control. So we hear about people taking like a thousand milligrams of lysine three times a day, maybe once with each meal and, in order to get a cold sore under control. Now, if you're just trying to keep a cold sore from showing up, you certainly don't need to use that much. You can probably use a, a whole lot less during those circumstances. I like to see people not even use any, really, unless they're in a situation where they feel like, oh, I'm doing some of these things that could uh, pull calcium out of the tissues or raise my urine pH, and I should probably use some lysine this week just to make sure that I don't set myself up for a breakout. Now, lysine ointments are also very popular, and we'll put links in the description below to some that you can find on Amazon for lysine supplements and lysine ointments, but these are really popular, and you're going to be able to find them in most health food stores locally as well. But a lot of people use the lysine ointment right on the cold sore to kind of help that lysine push calcium back to the tissue right at the source of, of, the, of the sore. So that can kind of speed up the recovery a little bit. Um, the lysine can do it too. Just don't view these things like magic. You're not going to take a few capsules of lysine and the cold sore is going to be gone in a few hours. There's, there's been like damaged skin there that has to repair in a lot of cases. But it can really speed up the process. And especially if you just kind of feel one coming on. You know, a lot of times 
when someone's had a lot of cold sores, they know, oh, I'm kind of getting this tingly kind of feeling here. I kind of feel like a cold sore is going on, coming on. And if you can pound the lysine then, a lot of times you can keep that from, from showing up. Now, another thing that can help are omega-3 fatty acids. These kind of can help push calcium back to the tissue level as well. And I prefer to see people use like olive oil that has a good mixture of different fatty acids in there and not so many of these omega-3 type fatty acids. The, the fatty acids are really not as beneficial as most people think and there's a lot of people with specific imbalances that uh, fatty acids and omega-3 fatty acids can really magnify that problem for them. We'll put more information in the description below this video if you want to learn more about fatty acids, but just know that they can be beneficial to getting that calcium back down to the tissue level, but it's not something that I feel like everybody should use. I, I feel like more people should focus more on, on lysine than fatty acids. Just know that it's something that could help out, and if you find that you're getting a lot of them and maybe the lysine isn't enough, then maybe adding some olive oil into your diet can be beneficial. Just don't cook with the olive oil. Uh, you never want to cook olive oil because heating it can turn those fats into toxic fats. So you can cook your food and then add olive oil after it, but it's much better to cook in things like butter or coconut oil or you know duck fat. All these saturated fat types of things are, are better to cook with. So another thing that you can do if you're having a lot of cold sores is look at the amount of carbohydrates that you're eating. If you're eating way too many starchy carbohydrates or sugars or liquid sugars, then you're going to have a hard time overpowering that just by taking lysine. You're going to have to probably change your diet a little bit, improve and improve what your, your choices that you're making with your food to really get a lot of improvements. So one thing I like to see people do is uh, include some what we call medium carb foods. Foods that include the carbs that you might need to function, but the carbs are not so high that they're going to create this huge blood sugar spike and really pull a lot of calcium out of the tissues. So medium carb foods would include things like you know butternut squash or, or um, sweet potatoes or maybe some Brussels sprouts. You know these are real food sources of carbohydrates that are not so high like you know bread or, or potatoes or pasta or rice or those kind of things. So a lot of people will sort of gravitate more towards eating more carbs because they don't have the ability to properly break down proteins and fats. And if they eat too much proteins or fats, they kind of feel lousy and they're like, well, I'll just eat these carbs and I feel a lot better then because it's easier to digest carbs. So if you're having any kind of digestive symptoms, that can be a strong sign that maybe you don't have the ability to break down proteins and fats and that you need those carbs a little bit more. So if you can take steps to improve your digestion, then all of a sudden you don't need so many carbs and you can stop pulling all this calcium out of your tissues. So if you have questions about that, we have a totally free four-week digestion course that's online and we'll put a link to that course in the description below and it's, it's totally free and it kind of walks you through figuring out if there's aspects of digestion that aren't working correctly and if there are steps you can take to improve that. So that can be a really big help and kind of reduce your need for carbs. A lot of people just think, oh, I'm a jockaholic, you know, and I just got to have carbs. I'm addicted. And there's a reason that that's the case. The reason is that your body might not be able to access nutrients from other foods. And so that's kind of what you gravitate towards. But you can correct that by correcting di digestive malfunctions. So you can see that this information can really be your toolbox to remove yourself from cold sores for good. You can kind of keep an eye on your urine pH and if it goes too high, just take the steps that you need to take to, to bring that down. And when you feel one coming on, you can kind of see, okay, is my, is my urine pH too high or should I just increase the number, the amount of lysine that I'm taking and using now and maybe decrease my carbs and sugars or, or vitamin D or sun exposure. Do whatever I got to do to keep this cold sore from breaking out and you can remove them. I hear from clients all the time. They're just like, yeah, I haven't had a cold sore in years because they know the right steps to take. So hope this is helpful. If it is, be sure to click on the like and subscribe button because that's what tells YouTube to show this video to more people and more people can find these answers too. This is a really simple thing once you understand it, but it's really rare that somebody actually teaches somebody uh, what they need to do to get rid of their cold sores. So I hope that that's helpful and I hope the digestion course is helpful if you need that. And for now, watch our playlist on optimizing digestion so you can get more insights into what may be going on with digestion and steps you can take to improve it.
I can't wait to hear about your results.